In this pod, we'll conduct an investigation to determine the specific heat capacity of one or more materials. The specific heat capacity of a material is the energy required to raise one kilogram of the material by one degree Celsius. Specific heat capacity, symbol C, is measured in joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. The equation to calculate the energy required to raise the mass of a material through an increase in temperature is delta Q equals M multiplied by C multiplied by delta theta. For example, if the specific heat capacity of aluminium is 900 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius, how much energy is needed to raise the temperature of a 3 kilogram block of aluminium by 20 degrees Celsius? Delta Q equals 3 multiplied by 900 multiplied by 20, which equals 54,000 joules. This is 54 kilojoules. To investigate specific heat capacity, you will need a DC power supply, a heater, a thermometer, an ammeter, a voltmeter, a stopwatch, and a one kilogram block of the material being tested. Examples could be iron, aluminium, and brass. The equipment should be set up as shown. The power supply is connected to the heater, with the ammeter connected in series and the voltmeter in parallel with the heater. The heater and thermometer are inserted into the appropriate parts of the block. When the equipment is set up and ready to go, you need to take the following steps. 1. Take and record an initial reading of the temperature in the block. 2. Set the power supply to deliver around 8 to 10 volts direct current supply. 3. Switch on the power supply and start the stopwatch. 4. Take and record readings from the ammeter, the voltmeter and the stopwatch. You should take readings every 60 seconds or more frequently as determined by your teacher. 5. Continue making recordings until the temperature of the block has risen by 10 degrees Celsius. 6. Switch off the power supply. To calculate the thermal energy that has been supplied to the block, you need to use the equation for power. Power, as measured in watts, is the energy supplied per second. In electrical terms, power is voltage multiplied by current. P equals V multiplied by I. Using this equation will enable you to calculate the amount of power. Once you have this figure, you'll need to work out the energy supplied. You can do this by using the value for power in another equation. Energy, in joules, equals power, in watts, multiplied by time, in seconds. Now that you know the energy supplied to the block, you can calculate the specific heat capacity of the material using the following equation. Specific heat capacity equals energy divided by mass multiplied by the rise in temperature. You will probably find your calculated values for C more than the actual values for the materials used. This is because some of the energy supplied will have been lost to the surrounding air. To address this, you could repeat the experiment using a suitable insulating material around the blocks. You can also carry out the experiment using blocks made from different materials. Now let's look at how you calculate the specific heat capacity of a liquid such as water. For this experiment, you need to set up standard laboratory apparatus. You'll need a voltmeter, ammeter, laboratory power supply, a calorimeter, a magnet stirring device, a stirring fish, heater and thermometer. Set them up as shown. There are a few things to note. The heater has to be waterproof and designed to operate submersed in water. The ammeter should be connected in series with the heater and the voltmeter connected in parallel across the heater. The magnetic stirring device agitates the stirring fish to make sure the water is adequately distributed during the heating process. The calorimeter is specially designed to limit heat loss from the water. The mass of water is found using a laboratory balance. The apparatus is set up and the temperature of the water obtained and noted at the start. When all this has been completed and you're ready, switch on the heater and start the stopwatch. As in the previous experiment, record the time for the temperature to rise by 10 degrees Celsius and make a note of it. It's helpful to record every 60 seconds until this point, or more frequently if instructed to by your teacher. You can then calculate the specific heat capacity of water using the same formulae as before. Once again, use P equals V multiplied by I to calculate power. 
then substitute this value into the following equation. Energy in joules equals power multiplied by time in seconds. As with before, this allows you to calculate the energy. The energy can then be used in specific heat capacity equals energy divided by mass multiplied by rise in temperature. This allows you to successfully determine the specific heat capacity of the liquid.